Good morning everyone. Welcome to our service this morning. And if this is the first time that you've joined us for worship in this way, we're very, very glad to have you with us. Well, Sylvia, our wonderful reader in training, is going to be speaking to us later on, thinking about the story of the Ascension and looking forward to Pentecost next weekend. It's a time, of course, at this time of year when uh, everyone in Bures would normally be celebrating Open Gardens weekend. And I know many of us will be missing the event this year. But part of Sylvia's message is about hope for the future. And in that vein, we look forward to a, the prospect of a really fantastic event next year. So this time between uh, Ascension and Pentecost is a time of excited anticipation in many ways. And I just wanted to flag up for you briefly the annual prayer initiative called Thy Kingdom Come, which has been running for a few years now at this time of year. There are lots of really helpful resources on the Thy Kingdom Come website. And if you're on the Benefis email list, you'll have had details of the link already. There are also details on the Facebook page and on the website. So do have a look and get involved. And as we get close to Pentecost next weekend, we'll send you some further information about Thy Kingdom Come events running locally and nationally. So now let's begin our time of worship with a prayer together. Let's pray. Father, although we can't be together in person this morning, we ask you nevertheless to give us a real sense of togetherness and of your presence among us. God of our days and years, wherever we are, we come together now as your church and we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ that our worship and our lives may glorify you. Amen. Well, we're going to have a song now. It's a song which is actually a bit of a prayer uh, as we ask God to open our hearts to him and help him help us to experience his power, his love and his glory. You can just listen. Or if you want to sing along, the words will be on the screen. Please come among us now, Lord, and open the eyes of our hearts. As we sing holy, holy, 
We come to God now, recognizing that our actions, words, and lives have so often been more focused on our own glory rather than his. So let's pray. When our actions are not loving and we think of just ourselves, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. When our words bring hurt to others and we don't even notice, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. When the way we live is selfish and we find no time for you, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. When we don't see you or reveal your love, your name is not glorified. Forgive us, God of glory. Forgive and renew us and let your glory be seen in our lives. Amen. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, and may we receive your forgiveness and know your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now Fred is going to read this morning's Bible passage, after which Sylvia will speak to us. Today's New Testament reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, and thank you, Fred, for that reading. The account of Jesus' ascension after his resurrection. Now I wonder if some of you might be the sort of person who reads a few pages of a book and then turns to the last page to see how it might all finish up. 
This account by Luke of Jesus' ascension is a bit like the end of a story, or perhaps the end of a film. Imagine it, the disciples standing there on the hillside looking up to the sky, and the image of Jesus rising gradually through the clouds. And then the music would build and the credits would roll and it would be finished, the end. But what was the whole story? What was the beginning and all the action that had taken place to bring us to that point? The beginning that Luke records in his Gospel, he certainly sets the scene and identifies the main character. We read about an excited, if nervous, Mary being told by an angel that the child she is going to give birth to is God's son, the long-awaited Messiah, the one who is going to restore the relationship God had with the world that he created. I will be their God and they will be my people, he said to Moses. When that amazing event happened, the angels joyfully tell the shepherds, the Messiah you have been looking for has been born in Bethlehem today. And then a few weeks later, when Mary and Joseph are taking the baby Jesus to present him at the temple, old Simeon passes by all the other parents and approaches Mary and Joseph, taking the baby in his arms, he says, now I am seeing the salvation that God has promised. This child is going to be the Messiah, the one to redeem Israel and the whole world. We know those familiar words, a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of your people Israel. Jesus was born. God was fulfilling his promise and sending his son to live amongst the people of earth, to show them what living in his kingdom is really like, and to make that all-important sacrifice once and for all for their disobedience, their sin. That was the beginning, and now we are looking at the ending. Jesus has demonstrated the kingdom of God through miracles, and teaching and challenging the entrenched religious traditions. He has done everything to point the people to his father and like blind Bartimaeus to open their eyes and their understanding to the wholeness of being in God's kingdom. And he has made that sacrifice. He was crucified and buried. But then there was a resurrection. Jesus was not dead anymore. He was very much alive. How the disciples must have learnt so much in those appearances that followed. When Jesus put all the pieces of the jigsaw in the right places. I would have quite liked to have had him sitting next to me when I was trying to write my Old Testament essay recently. But now it was time for Jesus to return to his father to receive the glory that was rightly his, and to share in the glory of that Father. From the Gospel reading today in John 17, we hear Jesus praying to his Father, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus was returning to the place he came from, to be fully divine. His time of sharing the human life was over. Paul elaborates in his letter to the Ephesians. He says, God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in this heavenly realm. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that has invoked, not only in the present age, but in the one to come. That is who Jesus really is. No wonder we worship him. But I was wrong when I said we were looking at the end of a story. 
more like the end of a chapter in an ongoing saga. Jesus hasn't quietly returned beyond the clouds to what we call heaven, beyond reach. He has gone global. He is universal, no longer limited by the geography of that part of the Middle East, and definitely not the earthly king of a super nation that many Jews were expecting and hoping for. Even the disciples were still asking, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? No. Before leaving them, Jesus gives his disciples their instructions for the next part of God's plan. You will carry on building the kingdom of God. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria and the whole world. They have been seeing Jesus at work for three years and now another 40 very special days. They have seen it for themselves. They were very well qualified to be witnesses, people who knew it firsthand. Like the seed pod that had ripened in the sun, it is time to burst open and spread the seed widely. But spare a thought for them. How will they manage without Jesus there to show them, to tell them, to correct them when they got it wrong? And they themselves scattered and perhaps without the encouragement and support from each other? The sense of togetherness under an inspiring leader was what they knew and it kept them going. I wonder, does that sound a bit like lockdown? We know Jesus is with us in church on a Sunday or Wednesday, at home group, in prayer groups, very special times. But groups aren't allowed now. Where is Jesus? No longer tied to the earth in a body, Jesus sent his spirit to be with his, spirit, his disciples. Each one, wherever they might be, and whatever they were being called to do. And Jesus still sends his spirit to be with each of us, wherever we are. He is not phased by closed doors, and for him there is no social distancing. Look, he says, I am with you always, even to the ends of the world. What was good news for the disciples as they set out to build the church for Christ across the world is good news for us too. The Spirit of Jesus is with us, giving us his love and his guidance, helping us to live lives that are witnesses to the holy and compassionate God. Because of the redemption achieved through the crucifixion, Jesus' ascension means that we too are welcome into the presence of God the Father. The Spirit has another name, the Comforter. The one who shares our sorrows, our hurts, our fears, and like someone giving us a hug, gives us the courage to take the next step, and then the next. Jesus' ascension was a glorious beginning. Without him returning to his Father in triumph and in glory, the coming of the Spirit would not have happened. Without the Spirit giving us the wisdom of Jesus, his comfort and his hope for the future, we will be struggling in isolation, perhaps gradually becoming overwhelmed by the negativity of news reports, concerned for our futures and that of our families. The realisation that we need the company of fellow humans to make us feel well, more fully human. Luke gives a brief account of the ascension at the end of his gospel and he tells us that as the disciples watched Jesus disappear, they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem full of joy. Here in 2020, some restrictions are being lifted. We may not feel quite so trapped, so isolated. But we are also being told that the virus isn't going away anytime soon. We might have to adjust living with it. 
How do we face that? Are we standing with the earth firmly beneath our feet, looking wistfully at a retreating vision of Jesus and the comfortable, encouraging times together as a church family? Or will we let the spirit of Jesus, Jesus gone global, come to each of us as he promised to those disciples? Life is tediously without routine for many. It is overbearingly busy for some, and it is full of anxiety for others. Will you and I face where we are at with the same joy the disciples felt as they turned away from that last moment with Jesus to face their new normal. With the coming of the Spirit, they went out into a world that was not only unreceptive and unbelieving, but at times antagonistic and threatening. But when you read the letters of the New Testament, you know the confident faith in Jesus as the Saviour of the world was unchanged and with it the joy of that ascension experience remained. Do you have the confidence of being in the kingdom of God who has the whole world in his, his hands, its present and its future? A God who has a plan for us, not to harm us, but to give us a future and a hope. And he needs us to write the next chapters of his story. The people of the world need to hear it now as never before. Amen. Thank you, Sylvia. Well, now Murray is going to lead us in prayer, after which we'll listen to, or sing if you like, uh, the hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, in the Acts passage that Sylvia has just spoken from, we see a bittersweet moment in the disciples' lives. That moment when you finally returned to heaven. You had completed the job you came to do. You changed the world forever. Just a few days later, the power of the Holy Spirit came down on those disciples. And we thank you that he is still here, living in the hearts of all those who know you and follow you. Two weeks ago, we celebrated the 75th anniversary of VE Day. In 1945, very soon after the war, a small number of Christian pilots wondered how all the planes left over from the war could be used. They realised that they would be invaluable in third world countries to carry medical supplies to remote areas and at the same time to spread the gospel. They formed the Mission Aviation Fellowship, MAF. 75 years later, MAF now serves over a thousand medical and missionary organisations across the world. Trips that would take days by land, by air, just take a few hours. Countless thousands of lives have been saved. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the vision of those pilots and the way the Holy Spirit has inspired the work of MAF. Please keep the current pilots safe as they carry on their invaluable work. We ask that you would enter more fully into our lives. Help us to hear your voice, listen to it and act upon it. In this time of coronavirus, we particularly ask for Christians across the world that all who may be ill or forced into isolation may be given an extra filling of your spirit. May they be surprised by the closeness they feel to you and give them the comfort no human.
can give. Help us to enjoy him more in our lives. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Murray and Sue will be leading our Wednesday morning worship and I'm looking forward to taking next week's Pentecost Sunday service. Don't forget to check out those resources from Thy Kingdom Come. Have a great week and remember that you are precious in God's sight. Go now to live and work to his praise and glory with this blessing. Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.